Hi, welcome back to educator.com. This is the lesson on the muscular system. There are many functions of muscles. The most obvious one is movement. Uh, it's not just movement of the body as a whole. Obviously, doing this requires muscles, but all of the movement within the body regulated by muscles. Um, something as simple as blood flow. Within your arteries especially, there are very important muscles for regulating how thin or how thick those blood vessels are. And that helps distribute the right amount of blood to the particular places in the body that need a slight adjustment. So within the body, uh, muscles very important, the ones that you can't consciously control. Uh, for instance, muscles control whether or not my hairs are standing straight up and my pores are closed, or if they're just kind of relaxed like they are now. And those are, once again, muscles that we don't think about because we don't really have to think about it consciously to make it work. So there are, of course, voluntary muscles, also known as skeletal muscles, and then these would fall under smooth muscles or cardiac muscles, which we'll talk about more on a slide in the future. Maintaining body position. Uh, just sitting like I am now, I have a bunch of muscles that are contracted and a bunch of muscles that are relaxed. And if I adjust my position, then I'm changing, obviously, which muscles are relaxed and which muscles are contracted. Support of soft tissues. If you think about the abdominal muscles, even if you don't have a six-pack, having all of these muscles right here is the next best thing to having bones there. And if we had bones there, uh, it'd be a little different in terms of how we move this part of our chest. But um, support of soft tissues, having uh, muscles here adjacent to the more fragile, important vital organs of the you know intestine variety, that's very important. Regulating entrances and exits not just the mouth, um, the connection between the esophagus and the stomach. At the bottom of, of the tube that gets food into your stomach, you have the lower esophageal sphincter. And a sphincter is kind of like a round muscular doorway. And so that helps regulate food going into the stomach. There's also a sphincter on the bottom end of the stomach that helps regulate how much food, at, digested food, uh, is going into the, the small intestine for further breakdown and absorption of nutrients. Another one, the anal sphincter. Of course, that's going to regulate when and where uh, you're going to defecate. Maintaining body temperature. Of course, shivering. Uh, that is something <laughs> that's going to help you not freeze to death. And really, shivering is a bunch of really quick contractions and relaxations that you don't have conscious control over, but it's important because it actually will raise your body temperature a bit by having all of that uh, muscular movement. The three major types of muscle cells or muscle fibers, they're one and the same. You can call every individual muscle cell a fiber that has a bunch of protein fibers jam-packed in it. So we could refer to the major uh, muscles of the body as being skeletal, um, smooth, or cardiac, and then the cells within each one of those can be called skeletal, smooth, or cardiac. This particular image here, the green one, that's skeletal or striated muscle. So striations are these little lines. If you look carefully, this is a skeletal muscle fiber. And then you can see that when you look at each one of them, there are these tiny lines that are perpendicular to the orientation of the fiber. These little lines you can call striations. And we'll get into more in the future what are those lines and why they're important. These blue things here, they are nuclei. Each one is an individual nucleus, and it's very typical for muscles in the body to be multinucleated, having more than one nucleus in a single cell. And there's a lot going on. So having some additional nuclei to help coordinate all of those muscular movements, important. This picture here is smooth muscle. It looks smooth to the touch, almost like if, if you touched it, it, it wouldn't be very bumpy. It would be quite smooth. Uh, those are involuntary. You do not have conscious control over smooth muscles. So like I mentioned before, the muscles that are inside of an artery, um, the erector pili muscles of the skin, uh, the muscles in the uh, organs of the body. You can't consciously mm, contract your stomach. You can't consciously <laughs> contract your small intestine. It happens by your brain regulating it, but it's not your conscious brain. And that's good. It's good not to have to think about those things. So smooth muscles, a little bit different in structure. These are um, involuntary muscles. Cardiac. 
of course, that's found in one place of the body. It's the heart muscles. Uh, so the, the muscle fibers of the heart, also not a voluntary thing. Yes, you can voluntarily do things to elevate your heart rate, uh, but your heart rate is going to be adjusted based on uh, your body's need for blood. What does this mean? It basically means intercalated disc. This right here is an intercalated disc. Here's one cardiac muscle fiber, here's another. And you'll see them connected via these intercalated discs. It looks a little bit different than uh, the skeletal or striated muscle. And also a classic look with cardiac muscle histology, looking at these microscope images, you see little spaces. And those little spaces help facilitate uh, the electric flow throughout uh, those cardiac muscle fibers to initiate heartbeats.